Bakes, bootlegs, and knockoffs are available for almost any product. And in the collectible community, these can be found in abundance. My new figure obsession, QPOS kits, are no exceptions. And I've managed to find some unofficial versions in order to show you what to look out for when buying from websites that you're a little unsure about. Hello all, my name's Daniel, and welcome to Twisted Geek. Some fakes, bootlegs, and knockoffs can be easily spotted. Some, on the other hand, not so much. And just before we get into this, I just want to say a little disclaimer. By no means am I saying do not buy fakes, bootlegs, or knockoffs, because they do actually have their place inside the market. It's more so that you know when purchasing that these are not genuine. When you're on a budget or have very little disposable income, these are great for collecting characters and series that you love. You can get them in all different forms, such as coupon skits, prize figures, some versions of scales, as well as Funko Pops and much more that you otherwise may not be able to afford. In order to judge these, I have purchased two coupon skits to compare to my official versions. These are Kurosaki Ichigo and Toshiro Hitsugaya from Bleach. As you can see in the footage on screen, these came bubble wrapped with the boxes flat packed. And I think this is for a few reasons. The main reason being smaller package is cheaper to ship out. Now the boxes themselves show signs to me of not being legitimate. Now this might not be easy to spot, but after working in the paper print industry for a lot of years, I'm used to assessing print quality and in these cases, I can see that though the print qualities are decent, they are by no means high quality. This is mainly down to, you can see, in difference of colour tones, especially on the skin and just where gradients happen. The position of the print is a lot lower quality compared to the real boxes, which, would be, which is easier to see when we put them side to side. So from these, you'll see other issues. Yes, they are made more obvious by having them side to side. This is the sections of information, text, logos, etc. are all missing from the bootleg items. This can also be made more apparent when you open the lid and you see the inner flaps. A couple of things here. One, on the fake ones here, the inner flaps are a lot smaller and don't actually fully meet. And of course, they are missing both of their logos, as well as a stamped code that comes on the inside of each of the boxes. There are a couple of reasons for this, and one is copyright. Yup, that's right, copyright definitely comes into play here. If they had all these logos and information on, it shows that they're fully trying to imitate and replicate their original, which could cause a lot more issues for the makers themselves. Though I do think this plays a factor in it, I do not think this is actually the main reason. I personally think it just simply comes down to cost. Less time in recreating the artwork, essentially possibly less ink used, which all means that this can be printed and produced at a lower cost. Though your box experience might vary from figure to figure or series to series, I have seen some out there from the Disney collection, which has a lot more information on the boxes compared to these bleach ones. The cost really comes into play when you look at the inner cardboard. With the fake one coming in flat packed, you don't actually have the inner cardboard support that will help support the, not just the box, but protect the figure itself. All in all, this massively reduced the cost, not just in the shipping, but in the production of it. When it comes to the figures itself, you'll see on screen here, whilst I was moving them from the bubble wrap, there was a few issues, such as a bent sword that also does not fit on his back. The hole just isn't big enough, that does not fit at all, and we can't get it around to the other little section there. There's, there's a hole there, and there's a big slit there. So we take a closer look at the figures. The first thing we look at would be the bases. Side by side, you'll see that the fake one is a lot more glossier and the detail on the embossing isn't as deep, isn't as crisp compared to the real one, which is a lot more sharper, a lot more nicer. And one of the big issues you'll see straight away, mainly because of the side by side here, is that the QPOSCA logo is completely missing from the fake one. On the bottom as well, you'll also notice the fake one has nothing on it and nothing embossed at all. And the real one has where it was made by Bandai stamped into the bottom. Now going on to the characters and the figures itself, side by side you'll see that the fake one is a little bit shorter, only a few millimeters or so, but then the head itself, you can see a bit more difference in the overall size of the head. So if we zoom in and take a closer look at the head itself, you'll notice a few issues as well with the paintwork and especially the eyes. The eyes are a massive part of Cube Poskets. It's what gives them them really nice look and like chibi kind of 
kawaii kind of look to them which is really cool has a nice gloss shine to it and the print quality on the eye is absolutely amazing on the fake one print quality is not too bad doesn't really have that full gloss you can see the difference in the way the print is and the gradients on it it's not overly all that great comes to the eyelashes around toshiro yourself you want to notice a lot of differences there on the fake one it flicks up a lot more there's a lot more of the eyelash line for some reason it's a little bit thicker a little bit bolder but it's a lot more subtle and a lot more neat and nicer on the real one his head as well is a little bit more twisted that could just be an issue with the mold not setting right for them which could also be the issue why the sword doesn't fit into the back as well because he is leaning a little bit more over than the real version and you go down to the garments the colors are a little bit off not by too much this time i have seen colors like this a lot worse but then even then you go down to like the transfers and the images on his cape itself them diamonds just aren't as crisp on the real a fake one compared to the real one and they're a little bit out and overline and he's like kind of stitch line as well it's not overly great when it comes to the back of it that's not actually too bad but when you look at the back you'll see a difference as well which is the hair the hair is nowhere near as crisp as clean as nicely molded molded as nicely detailed on the fake one compared to the real one and with being an anime character and figure it is something that you're going to notice straight away if you've watched a series and things like that it's it and the hair and the eyes are some of the big parts of anime some of the more distinguishable features you'll see in some of the characters and that is just it doesn't quite get it there with the fake one and then you've got of course that logo on the back for his captain insignia i know this the sword itself can't go in but you'll notice that it is out of line and not great compared to the real one sword on the real one a lot more solid a lot more sturdier it's in really nice and it's absolutely awesome and of course to make sure that this is just not like a one-off this is why i also got kurosaki ichigo and i'll put on screen there as well you'll see the box differences as well in between that and i'll go on to the figures and show just a quick look around at the figure and you'll see some of the little subtle differences there as well on his chest you'll notice that that the bands he's got there like the transfer color the black is is smudgy it, it's it's out of alignment it's not sharp it's not crisp where it's lovely nice on the real version bases are exactly the same the fake one doesn't have the correct embossing doesn't have the cuposket logo compared to the real one the hair and head is a lot smaller the eyes though are a little bit better on kurosaki ichigo they still don't have that fullness to them and the face itself doesn't have that full well fullness to them actually given the nice shape and look of them and i'll also show you here as well that the, the fake one came with the sword separate and i had actually put that into the hand whereas the real one the sword does twist on it but it was actually already in his hand fully and i think that was the way it was meant to be so like the molds kind of you can probably see a little around i might be able to pull that if i really want to but it might damage that way as the fake one i had actually forced that in there little deal like his hand and his sandals and the overall colors just help discern it differently from the real to fake if you look as well one of the main things as well on the kuzaki chigo one on his belt it's actually got like a lip on the back that covers it over a little bit on the fake one that little lip is completely missing so looking at these as a whole one other thing to factor in here is of course the cost now the coupons kits will generally range somewhere around this price the 27.99 30 pound but can go all the way down to i've got a few that you see like my dabby and things out which on previous videos which i can link down below which are about seven pounds but they were on offer so you're normally going to pay for something new like this about 30 pound now these unofficial ones that i got were actually 4.93 each with a little bit of postage and that which came to this shy of 14 pound so we shall say about seven pound each in total and for that price i don't actually think they're too bad if you can't afford to pay out and get that 30 pound figure these kuposket unofficial versions are pretty damn good these two versions are actually going to go to my daughter she's been asking for them for ages since she saw them and i told her of course as soon as the video is done and i've got it all sorted fair enough she can have them she can go play with them and enjoy them and i know she will end up doing so i'll definitely say yes be be wary of certain websites and you probably most of you will know the kind of websites you're looking at most of this wish.com aliexpress timo and places like that potentially do have more of the unofficial side of things on them stuff like this you'd very rarely find in a store you might find them on say a store somewhere at a festival or some kind of gig or whatever it's going to be but generally in store especially here in the uk you won't really find uh, fake or unofficial versions because people normally do get them direct from suppliers 
But I hope this video has been helpful, informative for you all. And of course, it kind of just helped me talk a little bit more about my obsession that is Cuposket, which I absolutely love. And there will be more Cuposket videos coming soon. And let me know down in the comments below what you think of them. Do you think you would actually be okay with these unofficial versions? Or if you've got the little extra budget and you're happy just to save up a little bit more and get the official versions? For me, I'm lucky enough in a way that I can actually spend like £30 on one of these, maybe once a month or so like that, so I can build my collection nicely. But if you don't, there's no shame in going to one of these websites and ordering one of these figures. My name's been Daniel. This has been Twisted Geek. Hope you have an awesome week. Cheers.